Hey guys, Nicole here with Obscure Reptiles and Caging and today we're going to be doing a boa care guide. So let's get started. Okay guys, so today we're going to be doing a very basic boa care guide. Personally, I only have my bug-eyed boa. Uh, I just did a video on her last week. If you're interested in watching that, I will put the link in the description box below. Um, but I personally don't have any boas here. I do have a few, but they're over at my buddy Lewis's house. So we got some good foot footage over there of boas, the different colors, their different sizes, some cage setups, all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to be putting a lot of those clips in here for you guys today. This is just going to be a basic care guide. We're going to do another video one day on breeding. Um, and we're also going to do a video another day on different morphs, breaking it down, going over the basics so you guys understand and start learning. But right now it's just going to be the care guide. So if you're looking for a larger bodied, a bigger reptile, a boa constrictor it can be a very good pet. There are a lot of different things to break down like BCI versus BCC, um, a true red tail boa versus just a common boa, but we're not going to get into all that right now. We're just going to go for very basic. So if you're looking for a bigger reptile, a boa, like let's call it a red tail boa, can be a very good pet. They can get about six or even up to ten foot long, but that's very rare. Normally they're around six foot long, sometimes even smaller, but it takes a while to get to that size. They're a type of species that they will eat just about every time you give it to them. They're like a garbage disposal, but you do not want to feed them too fast. You don't want to overfeed or power feed. You want to feed them nice in a normal rate so that they should always be a rectangle. Keep in mind, these animals can live easily 20 to 30 years if kept in proper conditions. Generally, 15 to 20 is average, but they can live to be 30 years old if kept properly. So make sure that this is something that you want for quite a while. Because they do grow so large, they will need a larger enclosure, and it's all based on how big. Say you want to get a male, you might be able to get away with a 4x2x1, but a huge female, you're probably going to look at a 6x2x2 by two by two or even larger. Make sure you have the space for that type of enclosure. Care for them isn't very hard or complicated. It's very similar to a ball python. You're going to want a 92 to 95 degree hot spot. You're going to want the actual enclosure itself to be between 80 and 85 so the animal can self-regulate. Um, you're going to want to have some hides in there. You can use anything from plastic hides to cork bark to all different sorts of things as long as the animal can get inside of it and you're also going to want a pretty large water dish. Technically you are supposed to have a water dish big enough for the boa to get inside of in case they want to soak. So if you have a very large female you're going to be looking at a very large bin or tub so that that animal can fully soak itself. They need a little bit higher of a humidity like a 60 right around the 60 percent range is good for boas. They are very susceptible to having respiratory infections. The reason that is is because they need a higher humidity level and if you don't have a hot enough enclosure then they're going to get a respiratory infection from it being too cold and the high humidity. So make sure that your humidity is on point and make sure you have your heat on point. For example at night do not let the cage drop below 79 degrees. Anything lower and you can start getting respiratory infection. These animals can come in a wide range of color and patterns. As you can see a lot of his animals, I'll try to remember all the morphs and stuff, but most of his have albinos with different kind of complexes such as hypo, jungle, aztec, he has a few IMG, um, and there's a whole bunch of others that he has and we show in this video, but almost all of his snakes are multi-gene snakes. You can get them in different colors, but keep in mind the more genes and normally the crazier color and pattern, the more expensive the animal is. Some of his snakes are a few thousand dollar snakes, so keep in mind that when if you see a really cool snake on here you want to go buy it, they might be a lot more expensive than an average boa. You can get a normal common red tail boa for around a hundred dollars, nothing crazy. When it comes to boas when they are babies you want to feed them every seven days. You want to feed them something so that you barely if at all see a lump in their body. All reptiles as they grow their food size and intake grows with it. I can't stress that enough. People, I've had people who still give their two-year-old corn snake still a pinky because that's how it started. As an animal grows, the best rule of thumb, for example, when it comes to like snakes, ball python, boa, anything like that, you want to feed something that is the thickest part of their body. So if you have a very small boa that fits in your hand and a small mouse is the same size around as the thickest part of that snake, that's how you know what size meal. Because when they eat a meal, you really shouldn't even see a lump in their body. You shouldn't be able to tell that they just ate. 
Just for a quick example, this girl ate about 48 hours, a little bit less ago, but right here is where her meal is. And if you look really closely, you can slightly see a little bit larger of an area, but nothing crazy. The meal is small enough that you could barely even see where it is in her body. That's what you're shooting for when you're feeding these guys. You should also be able to see muscle tone. How she has a muscle on either side of her spine in the middle. You're supposed to be able to look at these guys and see a nice rectangle rather than a circle. As these animals get larger, you're going up in size. So for example, if she right there, she's on about small and medium mice. By the time that they're a year or two old, you're probably on small to medium rats. When they're around the two to three year old mark, you're only gonna be feeding them every 10 to 14 days. If they're a little bit smaller, maybe more often, or if you're breeding them and you're trying to get them in breeding form, that is when you can feed them a little bit bigger meals or a little bit more often. Especially if you just have a pet, there's no need to do that only every 10 to 14 days. You shouldn't see a spine sticking out. The best, the best way to know if your animal is a good shape or not, ever shaped like a teardrop, that means it's too skinny. You should never see a spine sticking out. If they're rectangular and you can see the muscle on both sides, like her for boas, that's perfect. For a ball python, they should be a little bit more of a circle, but they shouldn't be fat and obese. Obesity is a killer of all reptiles. You don't want a fat snake. When it comes to substrate for these guys, you can use lots of different types. I personally like Reptichip. It holds humidity when you want it to. You can spray it down and it's always, I've never had any issues with it having any mites or bugs or anything like that. So I personally like to use Reptichip. You can use things like Aspen and stuff like that, but Aspen will start to mold and you need a higher humidity for boas. So you would have to be changing it very, very often to prevent the mold. So things like Reptichip or another, a type of cocoa husk is a lot better option. There are a few other things you can use. There are different brands and stuff that are like Reptichip, if you don't like Reptichip specifically, but especially for boas, that's something that I would really recommend. Here is a little clip of a pretty much full grown female. They can get larger and they do slowly grow throughout their entire lives. They never really stop. That's why they always shed. Every time they shed, it's because they've grown too large for the skin that they're in and basically they're sizing up. So when snakes are younger, they shed more often. When they're older, they shed a lot less because they're not really growing as much. But they do still shed because they are still slowly growing. So this right here is a very friendly, very nice female. Normally males will not get as big as females and she could get bigger. She's about five years old I believe is what he said. So she's pretty much as large as she's going to get. We also have some videos of a two and a three year old snake that are various different sizes. One just eats a little bit better or has had larger meals than the other. Boas can really vary. If you want to breed a boa, you're going to want to make sure that they are the right age and the right size. If you power fed it its whole life and it's a super large snake that is still not sexually mature just because you made it very large very quickly. These are animals that for the best health you want to not, not exactly slow grow, but you want to give them a nice steady normal sized meals throughout their lives so that they can get to the size that they're supposed to be. Generally you want to breed between three and five years old. Males are always ready quicker than females. You want to make sure that your female is a little bit on the heftier side because when they start to breed, they're one species that you actually leave the male and female in the enclosure together. We'll get more into that for an actual breeding video, but you want to make sure that especially a female is a good size before breeding season because if she does have babies, she actually self incubates the babies because she has them live. So it puts a big strain on her body and you want to just make sure you're keeping a good eye on her body size and weight before breeding season starts. Because if she's too small and you try to breed her, you could hurt the female by breeding her when she's not ready. These can be very, very friendly animals but they also can be snippy. Having snakes, you have to know that sooner or later you are gonna get bit and that's okay. People get bit by their dogs or a cat scratches them. Part of having a snake is knowing that it can and it will bite you. They are still wild animals and they make amazing pets, but that is always gonna be an option. Uh, at the end of this, actually, Lewis was bragging to somebody walking by that he hasn't been bit in five years and he actually got bit. <laughs> Well, five years went down the drain. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> Sorry about that.
That's a very basic boa care guide. I hope it helps you guys out. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It really helps out. And we're going to be doing videos every Wednesday. We're in the middle of rearranging the reptile room, switching things around. So hopefully we'll have a little bit better of a background than just the hatchling babies for our next video. But we'll see you in the next one.